Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Uh, I would like to talk about the how the polarimetric observations and complementary observations can help us to understand magnetic cataclysmic variables. So uh, the the first the first thing I would like to to talk to you about is what is a cataclysmic variable. In some senses, it's very similar to X-ray binaries, but you have to change to the, new, the neutron star or the black hole by a white dwarf. And in cataclysmic variable variables, uh, the jet is not important. So the main, uh, the main system is the accretion, the accretion disk. The main, uh, the main, the main emission. So this is the um, uh, image for a standard cataclysmic variable, the the natural dynamical uh, configuration of the, the the mass transfer is a creation disk. But if you have uh, the white dwarf with a large magnetic field, we are talking about uh, ten to a hundred megagauss magnetic field, the accretion disk does not exist. We have a magnetic accretion disk and uh, very near the, the white dwarf, this accretion column uh, reaches supersonic velocity, then a shock develops. And in this region, we have an enhancement of density. And uh, we call this region post-shock region. And this region is a really bright spot of the system. Most of the mission, if you think in continuing mission and optical and X-ray comes from this region. So here we have a, a zoom in this region. Here uh, we have the post-shock region. Uh, in X-ray, we have a brain emission. And in optical and sometimes in the infrared, we have a cyclotron emission, which is highly polarized and also highly anisotropic. So uh, along the white dwarf rotation, you will see a strong modulation of polarization and total flux that can give us hint of what's happening in this region. And uh, so our approach is to observe those system in as many techniques as possible. And uh, I am going also to show you some modeling. And uh, what is important uh, to, to tell us, to tell you, is that this modeling enable us to determine very important parameters of the system as the white dwarf mass, as the white dwarf magnetic field and the mass accretion rate. So I, and uh, with this, we can understand the cataclysmic variable evolution and more important, the origin of the magnetic field in those uh, magnetic cataclysmic variable. This is uh, by far a, a very, we don't know how the magnetic field is formed in, in this system. So I will show you some examples of recent observations. I'm not going to, <laughs> to say the name of this object. You can see it's an object that you know we have, uh, we know we knew already that it was a polar by the photometric variability. And, and here I show you the kind of observations that you can do at the Observatório do Pico dos Dias Brasil using the IAG pole polarimeter made by Magalhães and collaborators. So uh, we have a system that varies with around two hours. So those points have around uh, some minutes of uh, time resolution and uh, we can measure the polarization vary in this system from about 30% to 0%. This is just a, a, an example of the kind of data. And then in the bottom panel, we see the total flux, uh, the variation of the total flux in magnitude. So here you can see that you are talking about an object of around uh, 17 magnitude. 
And uh, this is another object. This is an object that you have uh, confirmed as a polar in a spectroscopy survey with the solar four meter telescope. And uh, we have done also the polar polarization. We have measured the polarization of the system. Uh, here you can see that the object, the polarization varies from cycle to cycle. Here we, we are talking again about some hours of rotation period. And uh, for this object, we have also XMM uh, data. Uh, so here we are seeing the Bremsstrahlen emission from the, from the post-shock region. Okay, so how to interpret these, this data? We have developed uh, a numerical code. It's a 3D uh, radioactivity transfer code. Uh, we can calculate the cyclotron emission as, as well as the Bremsstrahl emission. So you can fit and model the optical emission and the X-rays. And uh, recently we have uh, introduced the, a correct physical calculation of the density and temperature profiles in the post-shock region. It's a very important ingredient to understand these, um, the emission of these systems. And uh, here we, uh, I show you some, some figures of a paper in preparation uh, in which we compare the results of our calculation with previous result in the, in the literature. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the profile of density and temperature is very dependent on the magnetic field, the white dwarf magnetic field, the white dwarf mass and the mass accretion rate. And here I show you uh, a fitting that we have done for a, another object. This is a, an already published uh, results. So you can see the kind of data we can obtain in, uh, with the IAG pole polarimeter in the, our observatory. Here we have four bands, B, R, V, and I. You can see the, how the flux vary and the, polar, the circular polarization vary. And this variation is caused by the white dwarf rotation. And this figure uh, it shows exactly the, the geometrical fitting the, 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 that it's necessary to explain this data. The blue line is our, is our model for this object. And uh, our model has a lot of, <laughs> of, of, of parameters, but I highlight here the, the, the most important in terms of uh, the physical understanding of those objects. Here, just as an example, uh, Murilo Martins is now the, doing his PhD on fitting this object. And uh, I have already showed the, the data. It, in here is just an example of a preliminary model of this object. And here uh, I show you a fitting in the optical and a fitting Two in minutes. the echo. Okay, thank you, John. So just to finish, Spark 4 is an instrument that we are developing. Dennis has already talked about uh, it uh, yesterday, and it will be a very nice instrument to study cataclysmic variables and uh, to do polarimetric time series in, in general. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.